Um, I'd like to introduce the CEO of the Capital Area Food Bank, Rada Mathaya. Thank you, Adam, and thank you, everyone, for being here on this extremely warm afternoon. So very thankful for Prince George's County for having this tent here uh, for, for all of us. I am delighted to be with all of you uh, and with this bright green, beautiful truck uh, behind us to mark the arrival of curbside groceries in Prince George's County. It's the food store that comes to you and will come to many neighborhoods in Prince George's County very, very soon. The mission of the Capital Area Food Bank is to provide, uh, to provide the opportunity for our neighbors to thrive and to do so by having access to good food and opportunity through community partnerships. And we're thrilled to be able to launch um, the curbside groceries here today. Something that we as a food bank do quite a bit of is listen to our clients. We have many different ways in which we do that. We have big surveys that we conduct every year. We have a client leadership council that engages with us throughout the year. And as we distribute food, we hear from our clients what their needs are. Now, one thing that came up to us uh, some time ago, a couple of years ago, was that an enormous number of people said they've got some money each week to be able to purchase groceries but they don't have an access to a full service, affordable grocery store near them. Many of them talked about barriers and transportation, either not having it or the fact that it takes time for them to take public transport, a couple of buses, metro, et cetera, to be able to get to the closest full service grocery store. And so what we're doing here with curbside groceries is bringing that grocery store to those neighborhoods that have challenges in accessing, um, accessing good, nutritious foods. Curbside groceries behind me, this is our second one, carries a full market basket of good, nutritious food that is really supports a healthy diet for all families. We've had to, uh, the chance to pilot this initiative. As I said, this is our second truck. The first one has been operating in D.C. Uh, over the course of the last year. And it is incredible the reviews that that truck is getting. Not only are people excited that it comes to their neighborhood, but we track sales. I was just telling Ira that earlier. We track sales on a weekly basis. And every single week, bar none, the top seller happens to be a fruit followed by a vegetable item. So we know that when good, affordable groceries are brought closer to people, that is what they choose to consume. And we are filling an important gap that exists in many of these areas. Um, some of our stops include uh, schools just outside of school entrances where kids come out at 3 o'clock and they want to grab a snack and it's great that we have healthy options available right there for them. Uh, some of our other stops include areas with a high density of seniors and the seniors comment on how easy it is for them not to have to walk some distance or not to allocate uh, the majority of a day to be able to go and get their food. So it's great that we have curbside groceries now, uh, uh, being able to serve kids, seniors, and everyone in between in Prince George's County. Now we know that there's this demand for healthy groceries and our hope is that others will be encouraged to bring these types of alternative format retail options to every neighborhood so that there are options for all of our neighbors. Now I mentioned that curbside groceries started because of feedback from our clients but it has been made possible because of some extraordinary partnerships and partners who I'm looking at at this very moment in time. Our deep thanks to the leadership of county, uh, the county executive, Angela Alsobrooks, here in Prince George's County. And an especially grateful um, uh, you know, gratitude to Todd Turner, a former council uh, chair and now council member in Prince George's County, who enabled the legislation to allow this truck uh, to be on the road. Our deep thanks also to our corporate partners who have financially enabled us to get this truck on the road. Uh, Giant Foods in particular supported both our trucks uh, in DC as well as here. Um, United Healthcare, so pleased to have them as a new and really significant partner of ours supporting this truck and so many of our Food Plus Health initiatives uh, across the region. And the Washingtonian Magazine, uh, they don't have a representative here today, but this was really important to them, especially given the Merrill family uh, contributions in Prince George's County, including the University of Maryland. So thank you. Dr. Kirk, thank you for being here. Ira, thank you for your support. Um, Larry Hens, a member of our board, is also here. Thank you, Larry, for your encouragement all along. Um, so it does truly take all of us across all sectors, government, private sector, and nonprofit, 
to be able to ensure the well-being of those neighbors who are more vulnerable and to ensure equitable access to nutritious food and all the opportunities and benefits that can arise from that. So thank you again for being out here for the launch and let me turn it over to our MC of the day, our Director of Public Policy and Advocacy, Adam LaRose. Our next speaker is going to be speaking on behalf of the County Executive at Prince George's County, Dr. George Askew, who's the C. Uh, Chief Administrative Officer for Health and Human Services and Education in the county. George, please. Thanks so much and, and good afternoon everybody. I bring greetings from the county executive. She was very disappointed uh, last minute. She wasn't able to make it. Fortunately, I was already going to be here because um, I love the Capital Area Food Bank as much as she does and really appreciative of, of their partnership. And in fact, was, was uh, here just, to, not here necessarily, but at the Capital Area Food Bank just a few weeks ago. Was it a few weeks ago? Not that long ago. As you released your report, um, a fantastic report around food, food security uh, in the region and so again thank you for, for your partnership and again the county executive sends her, her regrets but also uh, sends her thanks uh, as well. So I want to thank you all for joining us here today uh, as we launch the Cap Capital Area Food Bank's Prince George's County Curbside Groceries Program. I want to quickly acknowledge a few people behind today's event. Uh, I want to thank Councilmember Todd Turner who was the lead sponsor of the legislation as you just heard that made today possible. I also want to thank Ira Kress, President of Giant Food, and, and Dr. Kirk, the National Senior Medical Director of United Healthcare Community and State, uh, for being instrumental partners in this project. I also want to thank Rada Mathia, uh, who I've gotten a chance to see again, uh, <laughs> President and CEO of the Capital Area Food Bank, for your continued partnership and service to this region. The Capital Area Food Bank has been so important to this area for a long time fighting to end food insecurity for our area residents. They've been, the operate, they've been operating the curbside groceries in D.C. since January of last year as a response to feedback from area families calling for better access to healthy groceries. And I just remember when I came for the visit to Cap Capital Area Food Bank and I saw the truck and I said, ooh, we got to have one of those. It's coming. It's right around the corner. And so I'm so happy to, to, to be here. Um, and, and when the COVID-19 pandemic came into our county and upended our way of life, the Capital Area Food Bank was there for us. They jumped into action to help, to, uh, help us address the sudden need for additional food and take care of those who lacked resources during, the, during this public health crisis, which, by the way, we're still in, so please get vaccinated if you haven't been vaccinated as yet. Um, and, while I'm, and while I'm doing pitches, um, my wife and I have volunteered at the Capital Area Food Bank. I recommend that you also do that, all right? Enough for the public service announcements. <laughs> um, as we work to finally put an end to the pandemic and navigate our recovery, what still remains are the lasting issues that contributed to how hard COVID-19 affected our community. The pandemic made clear how urgently these issues need to be addressed, and we still must fix underlying problems that help deepen this crisis, particularly for Prince George's County. And one of those issues is access to healthy food. Even before the pandemic, Prince George's County had the highest percentage of food deserts in our region. Today, inside the Beltway, more than 50% of our food options are fast food options. A lack of access to grocers with, help with, with fresh produce has led to increased health issues such as hypertension, obesity, diabetes, and more. These underlying conditions directly contributed to the wave of serious COVID-19 cases our county faced. Because these underlying conditions, underlying health issues increased the chance of serious COVID infection. Our county's development projects and revitalization plans are part of our larger efforts to attract new restaurants and new grocery stores for residents as we work to eliminate the food deserts in our county. But the county executive has promised to bring innovative solutions to help our residents and bringing curbside groceries to Prince George's County is one of those creative programs that can directly improve the quality of life of our residents. When the Capital Area Food Bank came to the county executive's office to give an overview of their DC curbside groceries truck and their plans for how to operate in our county, we knew it was something we had to bring here. The county executive wants to thank, and I want to thank the county council, 
for acting quickly and unanimously passing the legislation that brings curbside groceries to us. The curbside groceries truck will operate in neighborhoods and areas with limited nutritious grocery options and offer residents a full market basket of fresh and affordable produce, meat, dairy, fish, baking, and healthy shelf stable items. Now, if you live in these areas, you won't have to choose between unhealthy eating and driving longer distances from your homes in search of healthy food. Curbside groceries will bring healthy eating options right to you, and you will now have a convenient way to receive high-quality fresh foods at affordable prices. Curbside groceries will also listen to feedback from our residents in order to make the program work as efficiently as possible. And while Capital Area Food Bank will manage and pay for the operation of the truck, and the groceries provided, we hope that eventually a grocer will take over the truck, which would lead to the expansion of the program with additional groceries providing additional trucks. This is an exciting day for our county, an exciting, exciting day for our county, and one that has been welcomed for a long time. We will continue working to make sure all of our residents have permanent access to fresh produce, but this is an important step towards that goal and the county executive has committed and has me committed to working to see us grow healthier together as a county as we can as we work to withstand any health care crisis that may come come our way in the future thank you all again for joining us today and thank you capital area food bank for this work thank you george never short on the public service announcements which we always appreciate <laughs> Our next speaker is the National Senior Medical Director for United Healthcare Community and State. Please welcome Dr. Arethusa Kirk. And your first feat was to get my name right, so thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Prince George's County. Thank you, Capital Area Food Bank. Thank you to all my uh, friends and colleagues that are here. Um, so I'm a pediatrician and I can tell you firsthand that we have families in my clinic that are asking every day for uh, healthy food choices and to be able to have those food choices delivered to their communities. At United Healthcare, our mission is to help people live healthier lives and to make the healthcare system work better for everyone. And that means that we're very serious about our opportunity and responsibility to meaningful con meaningfully contribute to advancing health equity and addressing health disparities and closing gaps in care for the people that we're so privileged to serve. Navig navigating healthcare today is so much more than just medical care. We know that 80% of the needs and influences of a person's health have nothing to do with clinical care, and United Healthcare understands that. And through the programs for empowering health, our commitment, we're focusing on this access to care and addressing social determinants of health in the communities that we serve. And the primary reasons that we see in our um, surveys for social determinants of health that families bring forward to us is food insecurity, transportation, and of course housing. But food insecurity comes up as one of the most important drivers. For so many, we know that the global pandemic, which continues, and please do get vaccinated for everyone who's listening out there, please do get vaccinated. This continues to cause social and economic challenges for our communities, and it affects the healthy behaviors and exacerbates health disparities and creates health, in health inequities. That's why it's important for us to partner with our support partners to address the high risk and high needs in the communities that we're so privileged to serve to really bring real solutions like the Scorius food truck behind us. We know that good food is so important for health. We know that good food actually equals pharmacy and good nutrition. Um, it is medicine for bodies. And we know that because people will choose foods that are healthy for them when they have the option to do so. Eating healthy can be very hard on a limited budget. And we also know because families struggle with transportation, getting to sources for healthy food is a significant issue. So bringing it to them is the solution. The curbside groceries truck is bringing fresh, healthy, and culturally relevant food. And by the way, locally sourced foods, fruits, and vegetables from the farms that are local to our community. And they're bringing them at accessible prices. By making it easier to buy and eat nutritious food, we know that people will improve their health overall. In addition to the Capital Area Food Bank, United Healthcare has awarded 
$1.5 million in grants to 11 other community-based organizations in Maryland to expand access to care and to address the social determinants of health. United Healthcare is honored because of this partnership with other companies and is dedicated to the organization for Capital Area Food Bank and other network partners. We thank Prince George's County for your partnership and for a shared commitment to fighting hunger and for the positive health outcomes that we will achieve together through this partnership. We're excited to work with you and others fighting, fighting hunger and addressing health disparities across our communities. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much, Dr. Kirk. Our next speaker represents District 4 on the Prince George's County Council. He's the chair of the Food Security County Task Force and an awesome friend of the Food Bank. Councilmember Todd Turner. Thank you, Adam. Appreciate that introduction. First and foremost, I want to welcome you to Prince George's County. For those who are not residents of Prince George's County, thank you for being here this morning. I also want to welcome you to Council District 6, which is not my council district, but it's Council Member Rodney Streeter. I do want to recognize Ms. Patrice Murray, who's the Chief of Staff for Council Member Streeter, is here. Unfortunately, he was not able to attend this morning. Um, Listen, the one thing I want to say, it is an exciting day. I agree with uh, Dr. Askew about this opportunity. I asked Rod a little bit earlier. I said, how's my truck doing? <laughs> but uh, it's not my truck, obviously. But, uh, and I think uh, I'll take you up on that, Dr. Askew. I might have to go get my CDL license to be able to drive it. <laughs> but I will, I, will, uh, I will guarantee that I will volunteer, perhaps, uh, once we get the location squared away and, and moving forward. So uh, now back to my prepared remarks. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, on behalf of uh, the County Council, our Chairman uh, Calvin Hawkins, Council Member Streeter, myself, and the other members of the Prince George's County Council, I want to welcome you the, this afternoon to this great occasion and want to thank in particular uh, both our governmental partners uh, that made this day possible as well as our community partners uh, as well, as you've heard as part of our uh, speaking today. Uh, in particular, obviously I want to thank uh, County Executive Angela Alsobrooks uh, for her support for moving this forward. I want to particularly want to thank uh, John Erzin, who's in the back, very uh, low-key person, Deputy Chief of Staff, but he's been at the forefront of making sure that we could move forward with this project. I also want to thank uh, our department heads and other workers, particularly the Department of uh, Permitting, Inspections, and Enforcement, and our Department of Health, as well as the Economic Development Corporation, because we all work together on the legislation uh, to allow this uh, opportunity to come to Prince George's County. And I can say, you know, you know, there is some regional pride and competition going on. The fact that uh, the District of Columbia had this first, that's not a big issue. <laughs> we'll just make it a little bit better uh, that's what they're doing in D.C. But no, this is obviously meeting a need that we all, unfortunately, uh, have to deal with uh, here in Prince George's County and around the region. Um, as uh, Adam mentioned, last year the Prince George's County Council uh, uh, put together a food security task force uh, as a result of the pandemic and the issues that are resulting, particularly related to access to food. And uh, either through our stand and deliver program, uh, through our partnerships with the Capital Area Food Bank, uh, United Way and others, our faith-based communities, our community uh, leaders in a community, we have done an outstanding job in trying to meet the needs of those uh, communities here in Prince George's County that have been impacted most by COVID-19 and particularly lack of access to, to food and healthy food options. In addition, the County Council over the past several years has taken legislative action in order to address health-related issues. Uh, we sit as the Board of Health uh, for Prince George's County, as Dr. Askew knows, and we've raised these issues and done some actions over the last couple of years, including uh, creating healthy food tax credits uh, in order to encourage the grocers to come to those areas of Prince George's County uh, that don't have full-service groceries. Uh, last year, we were the first uh, county, I think, in one of the first counties in the nation to adopt a healthy kids meal standard uh, here in Prince George's County, and we're trying to implement that as well. And so we understand uh, the opportunity and the challenges that we face in order to provide healthy food options for our residents here in Prince George's County. And obviously, we don't do this alone as a government. Uh, we've been working, obviously, with our federal partners, our state partners our municipal partners here in Prince George's County, as well as our faith-based and community partners. And so I just want to say partnership is the, the deal. And that, that's one of the uh, highlights, I would say, if we can have highlights about the COVID-19 pandemic, is about the fact that Prince Georgians, working with others who support us, have come together to address the needs as best we can, given the resources that we have, and to advocate for those additional resources. 
So we know we still have much to do. Uh, obviously, we're going to be utilizing some of our federal funding through the American Rescue Plan to continue our efforts uh, to provide uh, food options. But today, this is another tool for us, working with the Capital Area Food Bank to provide those options in, in the immediate term, as opposed to uh, some of the recommendations uh, that the Food Security Task Force will be coming out with later uh, this fall. And I have to say, it's not only exciting for today, but just last week I was at another press conference uh, with the Prince George's County Food Equity Council, who's been a tremendous partner for us here in Prince George's County as well, working with uh, Washington Gas, and we got uh, an opportunity to get three cold storage major trailers here in Prince George's County to, so our partners can store food uh, as they're distributing it to those who are in need. And so uh, this truck will be an example of what we can do here in Prince George's County. So I want to thank our partners, obviously RADA and Capital Area Food Bank, uh, obviously Giant uh, for your corporate participation and United Healthcare community as well uh, for your efforts to make this possible in Prince George's County. So make sure you buy something. It is open for purchase today. So we got to get that message out to those communities that will be serving. This will be in targeted areas of Prince George's County. Uh, and so obviously we're going to assist as, as county government to get that information out to our residents so they take advantage of this opportunity. So with that, thank you again. And we look forward to healthy food here in Prince George's County on the go. Thank you, Council Member Turner. Our next speaker is the president of Giant Food and a longstanding and respected member of the board uh, of the Capital Area Food Bank. I request. Thank you, Adam. Um, I am the, uh, the, 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 no, I'm just kidding. I'm the, I'm the president of Giant Food. The reality is I'm an ambassador for what is a great company. So I happen to get up here and speak on behalf of the company today. Uh, but we have 18,500 associates who really deliver my ability to, to run this tremendous organization. So I appreciate everybody coming out. You know, we've mentioned it's an exciting day. It really is an exciting day for Giant. I know it's an exciting day for the food bank. Um, but, but most importantly, it's an exciting day for the residents, the community of, of Prince George's County. Uh, one that I am actually very proud to have grown up in and been public schooled in. So uh, for me, it's, it, it, it is a little bit about coming home um, and it's related to Giant. Uh, we're a community grocery store. You know, at our core, we feed people, right? And that's what we've done for over 85 years now. Um, and we're extremely proud to be able to continue this partnership with the Capital Area Food Bank uh, in Prince George's County uh, to bring healthier options to the community. Because again, that is, that is what we are at our core. Uh, Rada mentioned it was back in October of last year uh, that we were able to partner with the Capital Area Food Bank and launch the, the first uh, curbside truck uh, in Ward 8, uh, doing the very same thing, getting closer to the community, um, improving both access to food and the types of food that the community had access to. Uh, and, and for us as a business, we take that extraordinarily seriously. Uh, we're extraordinarily passionate about it, and we are truly, truly committed to continuing to keep those deep-rooted uh, connections to the communities in which we are so privileged uh, to operate. So as a board member of the Capital Area Food Bank and double hatting, uh, as the president of Giant Food, I couldn't be more thrilled uh, to bring this type of program to Prince George's County uh, with the launch of this second curbside grocery truck and bring affordable, healthy food options directly into the communities that need it most. Uh, it's no secret, 16 and a half months ago, um, when we were all hit with COVID, um, we've seen this elevated need for food. Um, and the reality is those communities who had the highest need pre-COVID have suffered worse throughout COVID. Uh, so for us, it, it really is our sincere hope that in this continued partnership with the Capital Area Food Bank uh, and the launch of this, this new truck, that uh, we can bring that food and that healthier option to the communities of Prince George's County. Um, and, and really for us, that is something that every single person deserves. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, Ira. Now uh, we're gonna move this table over here a little bit and Lisa Wilderson, who is our uh, food bank uh, fellow for the curbside grocery truck is gonna do a demonstration. Uh, very comparable to some of the demonstrations that we perform in communities uh, where we will serve. I'm going to help them move this table. Yeah, activities such as this activity here where we outline how you can stretch your budget dollars on your grocery items. We have a full um, week of meals for $35 or less. 
And so on this, we have a full grocery list with items that you purchase from, you can purchase from the, uh, from the truck. We also have breakfast, lunch, snack, and dinner options. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to take this mask. <laughs> so this just gives you, uh, uh, you know, on, the, on, the full, on one sheet, a way of um, when you come to the, to the truck, you can um, purchase items and you can get a full week's worth of groceries. Then we have wonderful tips on the back side of this that also teach you how to stretch your grocery dollars. Now, next, what I'm going to do is we're going to do a uh, demonstration of a recipe that our clients very much enjoy. It's nutritious, it's quick, it's um, affordable, and um, it only takes a few minutes to, to put it together. And it's a black bean and corn salad. <laughs> 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 you can kind of quickly. Uh, Quickly, it's hot outside. Tom was just saying he's got a prepared dinner. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is a wonderful recipe. It's very quick. So, again, all of the items that you need for this recipe are available in the grocery store. You have black beans, cake, one can, and you just uh, drain it, rinse it, and just add it to your bowl. Then we have canned corn. You can also use fresh if you like. Um, and that's drained as well. One can. Just add that to the bowl. Alright. Then we have bell pepper. You can use green, red, whatever color you like. Green is, is usually available at all, all stores and it's on the truck. So one small bell pepper, medium, medium to small dice. Add that to the bowl. And then of course for color we have a red onion, half a red onion. However, you can use whatever onion you like. If you prefer yellow, you prefer or white, you can use that as well. And that's kind of like a small or medium dice. So you add that to the bowl. Right, so now that we have our salad ingredients and all the vegetables in the bowl, the next thing we would do is make the dressing. And the dressing is very simple. It's a simple dressing. It's just oil, canola, whatever oil you have. Um, uh, it has um, cumin, salt, and pepper, and lime juice, the juice of one lime, two tablespoons of um, oil, and then um, season to taste. You can add a, a, ta a teaspoon and a half of cumin, and then salt pepper to taste. When you put all of those ingredients in a bowl, uh, you, have, you can use a fork or if you have a little tiny whisk, whisk it together. Add that to your vegetables. So it's that simple. And then the stir it. Oh, you know what? I'm forgetting one ingredient, one of the most important ingredients. Let's see here. Now let's get it. Cilantro. Oh, a lot of people have a love-hate relationship with, with cilantro. <laughs> I happen to love it. If you don't like it, you don't need to use it. Or you can substitute another herb if you like some parsley or whatever. Two tablespoons chopped cilantro. Just add that to the bowl. And then toss it all together. And there you have it. Black bean and corn salad. Thank you. Thank you for your time. And does anyone have any questions? I'll have to get back to you. <laughs> That's a good question, actually. Actually, it is. Um, let's see. I think the beans are.
Take the next 10 minutes before we wrap up. Uh, we're going to do tours and we're going to have the speakers uh, come up and just take a quick picture. So, thank you all for coming.